Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar on Lean product development facilitated by Nor Norbert Majerus. Norbert recently published his first book last year titled Lean Driven Innovation, which has just won the Shingo Research Award. Norbert also led a successful lean transformation in Goodyear R&D that started back in 2005. Due to our limited time for this webinar, we will not be doing a Q&A session. Also, this will be recorded if you want to refer back to it later. So for now, let me turn things over to Norbert. Well, thanks Jacqueline and uh, thanks to uh, Lean Frontiers for giving me an opportunity to share some of um, uh, my Lean experience uh, that we had here at Goodyear with a, um, a larger audience. Um, actually, we are not going to talk about uh, Lean uh, product development today, but we're going to talk about um, how what we learned uh, about how you uh, implement a big uh, transformation like that. And we call it uh, transforming from the inside out. Uh, that may uh, sound uh, new and different to you, but uh, let's start with uh, top-down transformation. I'm sure most people um, are aware of that. Uh, we've all seen those. Um, for example, a new leader comes in and um, says, hey, um, uh, I have some experience with this, so let's do things differently. Uh, or um, you have a consultant or somebody who just sold uh, the leadership on a new idea, and um, then uh, we hear it uh, from the top down that uh, we're going to do lean now. We're going to do uh, something else. And a lot of leaders uh, think that uh, just the fact that they decided to do it um, is now um, motivating everybody to uh, jump on the bandwagon or get in line and uh, do the hardest to make it work. And, um, but I think we all know uh, what the problem is with these kind of transformations. Uh, first of all, um, uh, they uh, very, most of the time they lack the support from, um, uh, from the people who actually do the work. And um, the other thing that often happens that the people um, who work for this leader do not have the knowledge or do not have the background that they need uh, to make this um, to make this transformation successful. While on the other side, uh, uh, you probably also know these transformations. Uh, they uh, I call them from the bottom up. Uh, another word for it is uh, it's a grassroots uh, initiative. It's actually an initiative that started by the people who do the work. And um, uh, normally uh, uh, there is excellent buy-in if, if it comes from the people who do the work. In our case, it would be from the engineers that work here. It was their idea. So uh, the buy -in, uh, their buy-in is uh, virtually assured. It's very good. But the question then is, how do you get the support from the top because from my experience, um, even if it's a grassroots uh, initiative, if you do not get the support from the top, um, it is still an, um, a difficult uh, uh, thing to get it implemented. In fact, I just got off the phone this afternoon with a major um, computer uh, hardware supplier and uh, they have done a bottom-up transformation. She did it very good at it. But uh, they have new leadership now, and the question is, uh, how do we get the buy-in from our leaders now? And um, I uh, have, they asked me if I had some words of wisdom there for them. And actually, I do. In fact, uh, I will talk to their leadership and share some of the experiences that, uh, that uh, we, had, um, we had here at Goodyear. Um, and let me uh, say that it's not enough if you get the leader say, oh yeah, great idea, I uh, support your grassroots initiative. Uh, just announcing that is not quite enough. Um, uh, there still is a lot between the leader and between the people who um, started the grassroots initiative that um, there's a lot of ground there that has to be, uh, that has to be covered. Um, 
I know uh, Don Reinhardt, um, uh, he did a lot of work on lean product development and he says you have to start a lot of fires everywhere. One grass root is not enough, but if you have a few and uh, if you join forces now, you have a lot uh, better chance uh, to get it. There's also people who say that if you do grass root, um, uh, or if you would, uh, do what Reinhardtson called uh, uh, get a fire started, uh, you need to strategically uh, place those fires. Well, whatever. Uh, I, my experience is that both are difficult. The top down is difficult, and the bottom up is difficult. Uh, what we had a lot of luck at Goodyear with is what I call an inside out transformation. And I want to share with you um, uh, how we went about it, uh, what we call the inside out uh, transformation. So, first of all, uh, I want to make sure everybody understands who are the best positioned, uh, who are the best people uh, to make recommendations about changing the work that uh, people do. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, the people who do the work every day, they are the ones who know the work. And uh, they are in the best position to change the way uh, they work. And um, uh, it should be their recommendation. There's no doubt in my mind uh, about that. At Toyota now, uh, we know um, from many publications, uh, Toyota says the only people who know the work on the assembly line are the people who work on the assembly line, and any improvement uh, to that work has to come from the people who work on the assembly line. Now, you apply the same thing to professionals or uh, engineers. Um, those engineers normally know their own work very, very, very well. but um, where the problem is, um, is when they collaborate uh, with uh, a bunch of other engineers or where they uh, work together on a process that spans uh, through the whole company. And by the way, um, that is uh, a similar situation exists at the hospitals. Uh, doctors are professionals. They know their own work. They know how to do their, their own work. The challenges for the hospital uh, is how to um, create a process, an overall uh, process, where all the doctors and everybody else uh, who uh, is involved in uh, treating the patient or selling um, uh, their services, how they work together the best. But there again, um, the solution lies into um, uh, working with all those people who are in that value stream and make sure that uh, they make their recommendations and that uh, any improvements are made according to, uh, uh, to their recommendations. Now, let me uh, go to the next uh, slide here and talk about how, we, how you go about something like that. Well, for us here at Goodyear, the first um, challenge was to learn the principles. We had to uh, go out and really um, have a few um, people here, including myself, go and learn the lean principles. And uh, we uh, read a lot of books, went to conferences, um, brought in a whole bunch of consultants, and so on and so on. The next step then was uh, to teach those principles, because now we are in a position, uh, we know the work relatively well, we know the principles. Now we have to teach the principles to the people who do the work. So we, had, we started our lean transformation with a major uh, training program where we uh, really brought everybody in the building in and uh, taught them uh, the basic uh, lean principles. And then the third step was to coach and let the people who do the work apply those principles and figure out uh, where they apply, how they apply, and uh, I say here, coach, I do not say we tell them what to do, because I think it's very important to coach them along. Um, at the end of the day, um, they must feel they were part of this, and they figured this out, and they uh, recommended all the changes that have to be made. Now, um, a good way to look at this is uh, to lay out a cookie trail for them. and. Um, uh, not just tell them, hey, do this and that, but lay out the cookie trail for them that they can follow 
and um, and that uh, uh, that they can learn and that they can make the right recommendations and then um, uh, build something that uh, that works and that is sustainable. Uh, a big challenge in that whole um, in that whole transformation. If you look at uh, different professionals from different areas who have to come together, is to uh, create the alignment and to align everybody and keep them aligned. And um, again, that is probably the biggest challenge uh, for a coach uh, uh, trying to uh, to do something like this. Uh, basically, the same thing that uh, Toyota says works for factory workers works for engineers, and I think I've seen enough hospitals, and I know it works with uh, doctors and health professionals uh, uh, the same way, and um, I would, um, I've not seen a lot of uh, uh, administrations or uh, other service uh, offices, but I'm pretty sure it would uh, work with, uh, with those institutions just as well. Now here are this, the 11 steps to a lean culture. This is uh, based on our experience uh, in Goodyear. Uh, these are the steps that we learned uh, through a 10 year, oh, uh, the, the transformation actually didn't last 10 years. It was probably like in the five year range and um, uh, for, um, for the last four years we are in a, um, in a sustaining mode. Um, it has uh, stuck pretty well and has sustained itself pretty well. So the first step in uh, what I call a, um, a, a lean transformation is to do your homework. Uh, it is actually the one that um, uh, that I would do better if I do another uh, um, uh, transformation, lead another transformation. It is where uh, I have to admit I did not do enough homework. I did the homework with, uh, in some areas, but not in the, the most critical ones. I uh, recently saw a big uh, presentation by, um, uh, uh, by an, um, uh, the R&D leader from uh, Whirlpool, and uh, uh, this leader said for him this was the main thing that they had to do to get their transformation started. And they did it very, very well. In fact, uh, he used a bunch of tools and uh, had maps drawn. It was nicely plotted out what, um, uh, where they were going. And um, uh, one, one thing struck me. He had his friends on there. He said, these are the people that are going to support the, uh, the transformation. And he said, and these are the people who are going to work against it. And that, that was very impressive. Um, in my case, I had done a lot of work with the people that I knew would support the initiative, but I hadn't done much work with those that um, uh, that I knew would openly uh, uh, fight it or put up uh, resistance. So um, uh, that really uh, is a good investment to do your homework there and know uh, what you are dealing with and who you are dealing with and um, uh, who you need to uh, uh, to focus on. The second one is, uh, the, I, I call it get leverage. Um, Jim Womack in his book, um, uh, Lean Thinking, he's very clear about that point that um, uh, you need a, uh, the right leverage point uh, to start your initiative. And uh, Jim says uh, you need a disruptive event um, they really work in your favor there. And um, I have to agree with Jim because um, I tried it, and uh, we used uh, we had a strike here in at Goodyear. Um, uh, our um, uh, all our plants uh, went on strike in 2006, and um, they were on strike for about four months. And after that, we needed about six months uh, to recover to get uh, to fill our warehouses again, and so on. And we used that time to start our lean initiative. That was really. Um, turned out to be, a, a, that was a, a very, very good decision because we started with a new slate in product development and that was the time uh, to do it. It worked very well for us. Uh, Jim uh, Womack says um, you can use a reorganization, new leadership, 
you can actually use uh, layoffs or a downturn in the company or events like that. Um, those are all very good disruptive events to, that you can use uh, as a leverage point uh, to start your lean initiative. In fact, uh, Jim says, if you don't have a disruptive event, try to create one. And um, I have seen that work in one of our um, other innovation centers. Um, that's actually uh, what ended up happening. We had to create uh, our disruptive event in order to uh, to get uh, the, the initiative started and uh, stick. The next point is to engage the right people to lead the change. And um, I say people, I didn't say person there. Uh, in our case, of course, um, we had the leader of the initiative, uh, but that was not uh, quite good enough. Um, I had to really go out and uh, build a great team. and. Uh, the people that I uh, selected to be on that team uh, were people that I knew well. Uh, they were people that I knew uh, would help me. They were also people that had a great reputation. They were leaders. They were influencers. And um, that, um, that uh, to build this uh, coalition of the right people uh, is a very, very important step. Um, and I had people from all the different areas, and uh, whenever uh, one of the functions criticized the initiative, I knew who I would send over there to say, hey, wait a moment, I'm part of this. Uh, I, uh, I helped uh, set the stage for this. So that, uh, that's a very important point. In fact, um, uh, if you uh, take, go into the literature and you look at uh, Cutter, who is a lead, um, uh, a leading thinker on uh, on change management, um, uh, he makes exactly the same recommendation um, uh, in his book. For example, the uh, the penguin story, our iceberg is melting. Uh, John Cutter makes the recommendation uh, to build that uh, that leading coalition, I, and we found that something that worked very well in our case. Then, of course, you need to uh, to develop your vision, your plans. Uh, you need to know where you're going, and um, uh, if, if anybody questions, it has to be a consistent message, uh, a very consistent message where you are going. Um, the next uh, step is then to get the support, and that's very important. Um, it, um, it, you, you really, uh, I'm talking about the grassroots. Uh, so far we talked about grassroots, but I, um, I advocate to get the support from top management uh, very early on. And uh, this is the time to get the support. And um, I am not talking about to get the kind of support that, um, that says, hey, uh, that does a motivational speech to the rest of the organization and say, hey, we're all going to change now. Now, I'm talking about the support that happens in the background. Um, uh, you need somebody to help you manage up on uh, the, the initiative, remove obstacles, uh, encourage people, go talk to fellow leaders, and, um, uh, and so on and so on. I'm talking about that kind of, of support. I'm not talking about a leader where you just throw out the leader's name and then everybody rallies behind. Uh, that's not good enough. You really have to convince the people uh, why you do this uh, transformation and uh, they need to be convinced with better arguments. So the next um, item is then communicate and train. In fact, uh, when we did our initiative, we trained uh, not only once, we had to train three times. Because once the initiative started going, we had to uh, tell the people uh, why we did what. And we actually had three um, sets of training, uh, which was kind of right, uh, just in time training. But um, uh, engineers want to know why you do something. They uh, do not only want to know what you do, but if you want to get their buy-in, you need to tell them why you do it. And here's one uh, dealing with resistance. That was a very important one for me. I always thought uh, the people who tell you straight out that they don't want any part of this uh, idea, um, they are the ones that you need to work with and convince. But uh, I was wrong on that. The, 
uh, what really the biggest obstacle that I find found in our uh, big uh, lean transformation was the resistance that you don't see. There are always people working behind your back and um, I uh, did not know that I had to, uh, I was not aware of that. And um, uh, that is, uh, again, something uh, that I would uh, do better next time. In fact, uh, an interesting point, my, uh, my sponsor or uh, my, uh, uh, the, the, my support person had uh, taken care of a major part of that resistance and I didn't even know about it. Well, lucky uh, for me, but uh, knowing about it uh, helps in that case. Now the next one is now you have to really engage the whole organization and uh, that's the most important part in this whole um, idea of inside out transformation. A colleague of mine, he's the HR manager in our innovation center in Luxembourg and he says there are two kinds of transformations, he says, the ones that fail and the ones that engage the people. And I think he's absolutely right on it. Um, if you want to be successful, now you have to engage the whole uh, organization. And there's nothing better than uh, training that, uh, that helps you with that again. Training and talking, going on talking to the people, um, letting them voice their concerns and um, address their concerns. Now the next part is uh, do good things and talk about it. That's a German proverb. Everybody says you have to be humble when you do lean, when you do a lean transformation. And I agree with that. But there's one time where you can't be humble. If you have a little success in your transformation, you have to really brag about it. Because um, there are people who uh, look at all the, the obstacles, all the bad things that happen, and they uh, try to promote those and uh, you need to counterbalance that by uh, anything good that happens, you need to uh, talk about it. We're all familiar with the PDCA uh, plan, do, we're very good at, but you have to go and check on your transformation. You have to go and see is it working and what does not work and what do you have to adjust uh, to make it work. And then uh, on the last one, the sustain the change, um, you have to have a plan to sustain it. It's not going to sustain itself. And uh, the example I want to give you there, uh, most uh, uh, inmates who break out of an institution get caught uh, within 10 miles of the institution. And that's why those inmates had a great plan to get out of the institution. But very rarely they had a plan uh, how to stay out of the institution. And um, so I encourage everybody who is getting involved with a big uh, transformation, make plans to sustain it and then uh, try to uh, uh, stick with those plans and learn and uh, um, maybe adjust a little bit here and there. But uh, the, uh, the, the transformation is not over when you are done, as I said. We have been done at Goodyear for the last five years, but we still work on sustaining. Now, just uh, uh, at the end here, a few ideas on how to engage uh, the people. First of all, uh, focus on influencers. Try to find a few influencers some, uh, everywhere and uh, try to work uh, with those. Uh, they uh, are great in helping you, uh, on promoting your ideas and helping you uh, uh, implement it. In fact, uh, uh, we are teaching everybody um, and, um, a training program that we're using is called Influencer. And uh, uh, working on those key people, on these key influencers, that is very important. And it can be a team or a pilot program that you run, but really uh, identify a couple of those. Uh, they will uh, do a tremendous job uh, in helping you. The second, uh, we already talked about it, teach and teach again. And um, when you teach with lean, focus on the principles, not the tools. Actually, focus on the principles and the benefits, not the tools. Most lean training teaches tools. Now, if you do that, you have a lot of people running around. Now uh, they know a tool. They, uh, they, look, uh, they feel like they have a hammer and they are running around trying to find a nail. Well, that comes later. Uh, and, uh, when you start an initiative, focus on the principles uh, and uh, the benefits. 
And later when you get on uh, uh, with, when you need to teach the tools, well then teach the tools. Uh, an important point is to listen to the concerns. And um, I always thought that uh, you listen to people's concern and then you have to do everything that comes up. Well, that is not even possible. But the fact that you listen to the concerns, and if you are able to convince people that uh, you listen to their concerns, and if you can implement uh, their concerns or do something about their concerns, if you have the credibility that, um, uh, that you do that, I think that's the most important part. Uh, they will understand that not everybody's idea, in the, by the way, uh, we are 2,500 people in the organization um, uh, in the transformation that we did. They all have their own ideas. Uh, you can't get uh, implement everybody's idea of this many people, but you have to listen to them. You have to give them a way to voice their concerns, and you have to be credible that you really listen to, to their concerns. Uh, a very good uh, uh, next one is to go see. Um, while that thing goes on, you have to go out on the floor. You have to go see what happens. You have to go see if people struggle. And in fact, just go out there to be seen is uh, very often enough. Going out there and uh, uh, taking an interest in seeing what's going on builds trust. And you need that trust to um, to sustain uh, and uh, actually to implement and to sustain a, a transformation. It helped uh, us uh, really a lot just going out and uh, see what the engineers were doing, see how they were struggling, um, see what their struggles were, and then uh, build the trust that we're going to do something about it, uh, going to do something about their challenges. And their, um, uh, the, the roadblocks and the frustration sometimes. Then uh, coach towards the right solutions. Um, you could, it would be so tempting, you know the right solution, just tell people the right solutions. But that's not really um, uh, uh, creating sustainable solutions. Coach towards the solutions means uh, lay out a cookie trail. Make sure that when uh, they are part of the solution. Make sure the people think they found the solution. And uh, that way um, you have a much, much more sustainable um, system at the end than if you just go out there and uh, uh, straight out uh, tell them the solution. And then uh, the help and the support. That um, you go out on the floor, you go out to go see, and uh, that's because um, you genuinely want to have convince people that you're there to help and support. You're not out there to, um, uh, to find out is everybody doing their job and uh, do, is everybody doing a good job. You're out there to learn, to understand, uh, to help, and uh, to support people. And then the last one, um, thank people. And uh, if you have the means to reward people, then reward people. Um, very often, the biggest reward for people is just to stop by their office and, and thank them. And um, uh, we happen to have a CTO uh, here, Joe Zakowski, um, our chief technical officer. He's very good at that. Uh, he just stops by people's desk and thanks them. And you can't believe how much uh, people uh, appreciate that uh, or uh, value that because he just stops by everybody, all the peers around here, and uh, here's the, um, the vice president stopping by somebody's desk and in front of everybody thanking uh, this person for uh, what he or she has done uh, for the organization. Or it can be small things, it can be big things. Um, to me, uh, I learned that is probably worth more than uh, monetary or, or other rewards, just the fact that um, uh, somebody, especially uh, somebody higher up like your vice president, um, uh, finds the time to uh, walk by to somebody's desk and uh, stops by and uh, thanks that person. So these are my thoughts on um, uh, leading a big transformation, what I learned uh, during the implementation and uh, now um, uh, in the um, in the sustaining phase, and um, 
uh, and, uh, in this webinar, I understand uh, there is not enough time to take questions during the webinar. Here's my uh, email address, and uh, it's norbert.majeros at uh, goodyear.com. Uh, feel free to send me an email, send me a question. I do appreciate those. They are feedback for me, and I promise that I will answer them all. I, uh, I hope I don't get 5,000 now. Uh, no, just kidding. I, uh, I think I will be able to, um, to uh, answer them all. I also uh, listed my phone number there. There again, uh, if you uh, want to call, just go ahead. It's my, my company number. There's an, uh, an audit on it. If I don't pick up, uh, you can leave a message, and I, again, promise you to call you back or uh, send you an email. All right. Well, Norbert, thank you so much for facilitating our session today. To wrap up, I wanted to remind everyone that today's webinar is being recorded, so look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. Feel free to share this throughout your organization. So again, thank you, Norbert, and thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye. Bye.